Hello everyone, I'm Uncle Kage, although I don't know why. Over the years, I've gained something of a reputation for being an expert in Japanese sake. I don't consider that the case. I'm not really an expert. I simply drink a lot of it. And as we know, the, the old adage of YouTubers, familiarity breeds content. So a lot of people ask me questions about sake, uh, very often the same questions, over and over and over. So I thought I would make this little video just to give folks a primer in how to drink sake, selecting a sake, enjoying sake. I'm not going to get into tremendous detail. I'm, I don't want to get into you know, too many little tiny nitty gritties here. This is just a high level view to answer some of these questions and uh, hopefully you will find it informative. Drinking sake really involves only two things. First, a bottle, and second, your face. The idea is to put the contents of the bottle into your face. Cut! Cut. Why? The question, of course, is should sake be consumed warm or cold? There's a lot of discussion, a lot of a debate about that. Uh, I have always maintained that the whole concept of drinking sake hot came from the early days of sake importation into the United States when the Japanese preferred to send us their lower grade material. And since it was such crap, the uh, importers brewed up this whole story about, oh, sake should be drunk warm, it's traditional. If it's traditional to drink it warm, it's because they had some really crappy stuff. You drink it warm to kill the flavor so you don't have to taste it. Uh, I've been told, oh, that's not really true. Well, this is my video, so we're going to go with my version of the story. Warming up sake destroys it, in my opinion. Maybe there are some sakes that are designed to be consumed warm. They are beyond the scope of this video. They're probably crap anyway. If you go to a restaurant, almost universally, they're going to try to serve you warm sake, unless it's a higher-end restaurant and they have a large variety of sakes. Generally, if you go to your average Japanese restaurant and all they have is warm sake, they're going to serve it to you in this little gadget here. Uh, this is called a tokuri. It's basically an Erlenmeyer flask. The warm sake will go in here, and then they'll give you this little cup. It's called a choco. And the idea is you, you take your, your warm sake and you pour it into this little cup. But as you can see, it's, it's really only a shot glass size. That does not mean you pound down sake like a shot. I once gave somebody a, a little tiny bit of, of very, very expensive high-grade sake, and he just Wah! like that. I'm like, Yeesh! this is a sipping beverage. This is a beverage to enjoy. This is not something you pound back. Of course, if it is the hot sake, maybe you want to. That way you don't have to suffer through it. Um, if you somehow manage to get a, a, a warm or hot sake uh, that is at least tolerable, uh, you might ask them if they have a larger choco because uh, you, know, you can get more into this and you can drink a little bit uh, more heavily without having to constantly pour it back and forth in there. Now, when I go to restaurants, I actually... Cut. Good sake, however, really should be consumed cold because you get a very, very wide variety of flavors. You get overtones, you get undertones, you get intones, you get outtones. Uh, it just really is superior overall, at least in this sake drinker's opinion. And if you're going to drink sake cold, a standard wine glass is going to do just fine. They make all sorts of new special glassware for it, but this this will work for you. Asking me what sort of sake should I get is like asking me what sort of dog should I get. There are hundreds, even thousands of kinds of dogs out there. It all depends on your preference. I, for example, like proper dogs. The, the dogs that look like wolves. They're very, very close to their ancestor. They have a lot of the wolf in them. Some people, on the other hand, prefer those annoying little yappy dogs, the ones they carry around in their pockets. They're actually not as closely related to wolves genetically as they are to pillows. But we're getting a little off the topic. Uh, <clears throat> uh, generally, when people ask me what sort of sake should I get, it means they've been to the local supermarket 
or the local low-end wine store, and they've seen what I call the supermarket sakes. Uh, these are not, in general, high-end sakes. There's nothing wrong with them. They, they go by names like uh, Shochikubai, Fuki, Gekikan, Taiku, Ozeki, Hakutsuru, perfectly decent sakes in their own right. I just don't care for them myself. So in order to get good sake, you really have to go to a high-end wine store, or if you're lucky, you've got a really kick-ass supermarket. Uh, but in order to discuss what kind of sake to get, we first have to get into the different grades of sake. I'm very glad you asked that question. When the Japanese make sake, they don't just use any old rice. And that's one of the reasons why Japanese sake tends to be better than American sake. The Japanese have been cultivating special varieties of rice exclusively to make sake for hundreds of years. They go by such names as Gohyaku Mangoku and Yamada Nishiki. And the Americans, they just tend to use American rice, which is not really designed to be made into sake. The Japanese take the rice kernels and they put them in a big rock tumbler and they, they grind them down until about 70% of the rice kernel is left. Now this is important. The Japanese uh, are, have a whole system worked out. That number that I just gave you, 70% left over, the polishing ratio is gonna be printed on every bottle of Japanese sake. When you grind down that kernel to about 70%, that's called hanjozo. That's table sake. That's Saturday night sake. That's, that's you know, the yingling of sake. Uh, it's not bad. It's just your basic grade. As that polishing ratio gets lower, you're grinding away more of the outside part of the rice kernel that has a lot of extra things, some weird proteins, I don't know, monkey spit, bird poo, yeah, they grind all that stuff away. And when you get down to between 50 and 60% of the rice kernel left, that produces a sake that the Japanese call ginjo. It's a higher grade of sake. You're using less of the rice kernel, the more of the heart of the rice kernel. You get a mellower, richer, more complex sake out of that. As you continue to grind it down, you get below 50%, and that is something the Japanese call dai ginjo. That is the most mellow, the richest, the highest grade of sake. Uh, it's also the most expensive. So there's your first take-home lesson. Hanjozo, table sake, Saturday night, you can probably pick it up reasonably cheap. If you want to spend a little bit more, let's say, you know, you, you, you got a, a, some, some, your parents are coming over and you, you cleaned up the house and you want to give them something nice, you spend a bit more, you get some ginjo sake. Let's say you really want to impress someone, you get the dai ginjo sake. You're going to pay for it, but it will be worth it, believe me. Pro tip! If you have a bottle that is entirely in Japanese and you can't tell if you have a ginjo or dai ginjo or hanjozo sake other than the price, you can look at the label. All Japanese sakes on the label will print the polishing ratio. We'll hold this up or real close so you can see it. <clears throat> now, don't get excited by that 15. That's the alcohol content. If you look at the Number 45 there, try to memorize those characters ahead of it. That is the polishing ratio. This is a 45% polishing ratio. That puts it in the Dai Ginjo category because more than 50% of the rice kernel has been ground away. Only 45% is left. No, you're not. No, you're not. Remember, sake does not have a lot of natural preservatives in it. It is a very clean beverage, but that means that it is not going to last as long in its bottle as, say, red wine, which is full of tannic acid and other goofy things like that. 
Sake, in general, will last up to 18 months in its bottle. Good sakes I prefer not to buy if they're more than one year old, because after that period of time, it's gonna start to go off. Now, it's not an absolute date. You know, the, at, at the one-year point, the bottle doesn't detonate on the shelf. It's kind of like milk. If you've got a carton of milk and you're one or two days shy of the expiration date, it's still probably good. On the expiration date, two, three days afterward, you might be able to taste it. Okay, I'm going to have to drink this quick. It's got that little edge. It's starting to go. If it's two months after its expiration date, you probably don't want to open it. If it's two years after its expiration date, just leave the refrigerator shut, call the hazmat team, they'll take care of it for you. Well, hopefully it's printed on the bottle. Here we have a date that looks a little bit funny. This is written in Japanese style. They put the year first, followed by the month, and then the day. This is 2020, January 9th. So this sake was bottled in January of 2020. And as we are currently in September of 2020, as of this recording, this sake is within one year old. I will probably enjoy it. We have one here, which uses both conventions. We have the Japanese style at the top. We have 2003, that's March of 2020. And then they put for the Americans, the American style down there, March of 2020. That's very, very nice of them, I thought. Now this one is a little bit tricky. Is this a really old bottle? Actually, no. That first year is the year one of the Japanese imperial calendar. That is one reiwa, which was 2019. Two reiwa, if it started out 02, that is 2020. Uh, if you see any bottles out there where that first year is 30 or 29, they're gone, don't get those. This one here tried to trick me. I was looking all over the label, but they actually went and they printed their date up on the lid. So don't just pass the bottle over if you don't see that date on the label. Give it a good once over. It might be printed somewhere odd on the side of the cap uh, on the bottom. Now, what if the bottling date is not present on the bottle? First off, you should be a little suspicious. That's like buying milk that doesn't have an expiration date on it. One thing you can look for is color, if you can see the sake. I have here two bottles of sake. They are different brands, but in the same color bottle. Now, if you look closely, you will notice that the sake on your left is kind of grody yellow. It's even through the blue, you can see that it's kind of turned yellow. Whereas the one on the right is still rather clear. As sake ages, it starts to turn yellow. A little bit of yellow color is natural. The best sake, in my opinion, is perfectly clear. It looks like water. So, a little bit of yellow is okay, but if it's starting to get yellow to the extent that it, it looks like white wine, I wouldn't touch it. We have another example here. This is a, a beautifully clear bottle, uh, which, as you can see, the sake inside is just about colorless. Even with the blue, you can see that it is a very clear sake. So even though the bottling date has not been printed anywhere, actually the bottling date is on the lid. What did I tell you? There it is. Okay, so we are okay. Um, uh, that one is less than a year as well. The final step before sake is put into the bottle is to take this fermentation mixture and filter it. Sometimes they don't filter it, or they filter it only very, very uh, coarsely, and they leave in the rice solids. That is known as 
nigori sake. There's that word right there. And it comes out looking cloudy. This is what this sake looks like. It actually looks very much like a glass of milk. Nigori sakes, because that extra rice solid is in there, are much sweeter. Uh, I have likened it to the, the taste of the milk after you've had a bowl of Cap'n Crunch. You know how that tastes? Uh, I consider this a dessert sake uh, because it is so sweet. I don't recommend having this ahead of time. And for goodness sake, don't get drunk on this stuff. It will mess you up. What, you haven't been listening? What's the matter? You want me to chew your food for you as well? Oh, God. All right, all right. For you lazy folk out there, this happens to be my favorite type of sake right now. This is from the Dasai family of sakes. Dasai meaning Otterfest. Uh, incidentally, I have no financial interest in Dasai other than the fact that I buy a lot of their sake. Um, and I am receiving no compensation for this. I am simply expressing my personal opinion. This is my favorite type of sake. This particular one is Dasai 45. And uh, I'll walk you through the label here. We'll, we'll hold it up again <clears throat> so you can see. We can see the bottling date here of May of 2020. It's fresh. It's a Daiginjo. It is from Dasai. And it's relatively affordable. As, uh, as sakes go. So I am very pleased to have this bottle. Uh, I am now going to go consume this bottle as I think I've spent enough time uh, with you folk here. Thank you very much for paying attention. Maybe now you'll be able to pick the sake on your own instead of asking me all the time.